What is the best stand mount speaker? That was a trick question. There's no best. As I always said, a question of taste. Now, as YouTubers, we all have our biases. Sean from Zero Fidelity, he really likes the Bacar S400. Jay really likes the CSS Crichton 1T DX. And me, I really like the Apertura Swing. Now, out of all the speakers around two grand, it is one of my favorite. Now, today's video is not going to be long. I'm about to head out to the Toronto Audio Show tomorrow. And I wanted to make a quick video with minimum editing because the distributor Richard might show them there at the show. So if you're there, go to his room, check it out, and maybe harass him to demo it. So last year, when I made a video on the best of 2021, the Apertura Swing made it to the list. Now, a lot of you will hate me for making this video because even if you want to buy in North America, it is not easy. This is a speaker from France, not a big company run by a small family. So why should you consider the Swing compared to the other gazillion speakers out there? Why not the Bacar, the Dying Audio, the Manapan, and blah, blah, blah. The other day, an audio buddy, whom I'll call Mr. Carver, I call him that because he owns a pair of Carver speakers, dropped by. I spent the day with him testing the Manapan LRS, the 0.7 and the 1.7. And for those of you who have not seen that video, I'll link it in the first comment. Now, just before testing those Manapan, I had him listen to the Apertura. Needless to say, he thought the swing was pretty good. Now, here's the interesting part. After spending time with the Apertura swing, I switched to the Manapan LRS. I was expecting to blow him away with the soundstage with the LRS. You know, Manapan is known for his big soundstage. Guess what? I still remember the puzzled looking face of Mr. Carver. He said, why is the soundstage smaller than the swing? Now, let that sink in for a while. A stand mount speaker having a bigger soundstage than the famous Manapan LRS? Remember I said the speakers are produced in France and run by family apparently. Each crossover is fine-tuned for each speaker. I don't know what that means, but it sure sounds impressive and expensive. Next, it uses a ringdome tweeter. I guess it is my age. I notice now I'm, I much prefer not over-the-top sharp detail presentations as I used to a few years ago. Now, don't misunderstand me. It's not veil sounding but I find it has a good balance between detail and smoothness. The downside of this is, although it has a solid center image, it is not precise enough for you to see the lips of the singer. Unlike when I started my audio journey, I like ringdom tweeters now. There is this velvety smooth quality to it. In fact, one of the speakers I'm planning to bring to market now uses a ringdom tweeter. I like the tone it produces and the aperture swing has great tone. Bass, sure, you have upper bass and mid bass. It sounds bigger than it looks. It has that bigger tower speaker characteristics. I think what is interesting is how it scales up when you add a subwoofer to it. I think this is something we don't explore enough. When we pair a stand mount speaker with a subwoofer, do they all improve by 10% or some improve by 20% while others improve by 10% only? I would say this, this speaker paired with a sub is no joke. Mr. Quad spent a lot of time with it paired with a sub and for him in a treated room, it has everything you want. 3D, huge soundstage, detail and good bass. As far he, as he is concerned, just like Mr. Vintage and me, one of the best speakers he has heard at this price. But the biggest reason why I would urge you to go listen to it is its musicality. I know this is a bad word to use, musicality. What the hell is that? Can you show it in measurements? You know what sounds really musical to me might not be to you. That is why in a lot of videos, I try to avoid using this word. However, there is a connection for me with the singer when I listen to these speakers, even more than the higher end models. And this is not something you can really explain with graphs and measurements. Perhaps just the right amount of smoothness the right amount of detail makes it an engaging speaker for me. Who knows? Mr. Vintage loved it. Mr. Carver really liked it. Mr. Quad loved it and preferred it over the Bukhar S400 MK2. But 
Mr. Jazz, on the other hand, liked the Apertura Swing, but he preferred the Bukhar S400. Knowing Mr. Jazz's taste, that actually surprised me. So that's why I say in Hi-Fi, 1 plus 1 does not always equal to 2. So what is the negative of this speaker? If you're planning to buy this speaker, make sure you have a lot of power. Not that easy to drive. Without power, you might not get that low end, and you might sound a bit thin and bright. Next, you might have to play with cables to get the maximum sharpness out of them. All right, to recap. Actually, let me try to set the correct expectations for these speakers. Now, as someone who likes full count speakers, I like detail, I like brightness, I like sharpness. I like to, I like to hear my speakers sparkle like no tomorrow. These are not like that. These are what I consider musical speaker. The top end is on the smoother side, the more laid back side. So when you listen to these speakers, it's more for relaxation. And this is a concern that the distributor brought up to me. He said, if you listen to this in an audio show or in a showroom, when you put it next to, let's say, a BMW speaker, people tend to choose speakers with a lot of firework in those environments. And that is where his biggest concern is. And I get it. When I listen at my place, it takes a while for me to understand it. And once you do, you either fall in love with it or it's just simply not for you. So these kind of speaker, if you're somebody who like BMW Focal, maybe it's not for you. So with that said, just keep your expectations in check. This is more of a smoother, layback sounding speaker. It's too bad you have a hard time ordering one. I'll put the info in the first comment, okay? Ideally, ask them to pair with a sub when you addition it. For many of you, this might actually be your last speaker. All right, short video today. See you at the show.